Hey writers, if you're looking for a way to create, flesh out, or organize your story's world building, particularly for fantasy writers, but a lot of these tips will apply to any genre, today I'll be showing you these the exact world building templates that have helped me and have sort of developed over time. And at the end, I'm going to be giving you these free templates uh, for you to use, whether you're using Scrivener, Word Doc, or Google Docs. And I just want to give a huge shout out to two of my patrons, uh, Mary Walkenfuss and uh, Jennifer Roberts, who um, helped me so, so much the, because the templates, uh, I needed to test them and they were there just like an hour ago testing them and there was an issue with them and now they're fixed and they're wonderful and they're on my website and I will be giving them to you shortly. So thank you so much, Jennifer and Mary. I so, so appreciate it. Uh, this is also another fun collab with my friend Jane from Fiction Technician who is in the comments right now. So far, we've done videos on our plotting and character building templates. And right after my world building template video today, you can go to Jane's newest video to get her tips on planning perfect scenes. I definitely need that um, with tools like Scrivener's metadata feature. And I've seen a little sneak peek and it's really cool. So that's going to be linked down below for us to jump over to after this. But especially if you're participating in Preptober or NaNoWriMo this year, we thought these resources would be super helpful. So if you're looking for even more tips on plotting and prepping your novel, I've included all of our template videos in my full Preptober NaNoWriMo playlist linked down below. And as I get my template pulled up, let me know in the comments what are one or two elements you find most important to include in your world building profiles. And if you struggle with world building, feel free to share any questions or struggles you have or topics you hope that we cover today so that we can try to cover as much as possible. Finally, as I show you my templates, another fun thing is I'll be using some world building tidbits uh, from my own upcoming stories as examples to show you what I mean. So I'm really excited, but first of all, I just want to say hi to everybody in the comments. And for some reason, my, okay, wait, some reason my comments are not updating in StreamYard. So I don't know if I'm going to be able to put them up on the screen, but I have them pulled up from YouTube and I see child of God. I see Mary. Yay. Yes. Thank you so, so much for helping. I see Jane and absolutely Viona and Thomas. Yes. I love world building too. And Jennifer. Yes. I, Jennifer, I just gave you a huge shout out in case you missed it for helping me. So thank you. Thank you so much. Um, hi, Amanda and a bunch of others. So thanks guys so much for being here. Um, Jane is saying uh, one of the things she really likes putting and working into her uh, world building profiles is religion. She says, I think it's so hard to make that feel both genuine and original in a fiction world. Um, or is that the hard part, Jane? Uh, is that something that you struggle with? Let me know. Uh, Child of God says, I definitely struggle with some because while I, I can see them in my head, getting them down is very different. I was pantsing, but now I'm trying to outline more. Yeah. And sometimes pantsing is okay, like in the beginning for sure. And just exploring the story. But then when you get to the editing or like the second draft phase, it's like, okay, I need a plan a little bit more. Um, let's see. And Jane says definitely the hard part. Okay. So religion is definitely the hard part. So today I am going to get into more of the, how to brainstorm and sort of get your thoughts together and like organize your world building into a way that makes sense that you can reference, um, in these templates. I'll talk a little bit about development. But if you guys would like more videos going deeper into, I know I got a question on Instagram about magic systems. Um, religion is definitely, uh, would be a video all in itself, um, naming different, uh, places or creatures or things in your world. If you guys would like to see more nitty gritty videos about those kind of topics, let me know in the comments right now. And, um, but today let's go into a little bit of the basics, a little bit of the organization. Um, and Alexander is saying nonverbal communication communication styles, namely using humor for subtext, subtext communication. Gotcha. So we're talking about a lot of different things here uh, in the comments, but let's get into the templates, shall we? Um, all right. So let me just give you first a quick overview of like my process because I have a couple different templates I've developed and my process has changed over time. It will probably continue to change over time. My process doesn't necessarily mean that it'll be the perfect process for you. But what I'm hoping is that me sharing what I have created and what works for me, you guys can take what is most helpful and change it and adapt it to whatever uh, can work for you. 
So real quick, the first thing I've been trying to do is just make a list um, of not just a description of maybe the overall world, but a list of different locations in my world, different settings, provinces, kingdoms, taverns, all these different things that I know are going to be important. And um, then have a few details about each, which I'll show you in a second. Um, keep it really simple at first. Do some research and, research and um, some getting some inspiration from different places. So like Pinterest boards. I love Pinterest boards. Um, and I'll show you a quick kind of um, tidbit. So here, if you guys can see that, I'm making sure you can see it. Um, this is one of my Pinterest inspiration boards for On Wings of Ash and Dust. And you can see I've separated it. At first I had just like all this different inspiration pictures all in one board, but there are subcategories that I love sort of organizing them into. So I have five different clans in my fairy world. Um, and so I have a different board for each clan. I have fairies in general. I have a pirate sort of sub faction um, and other locations and aspects so and with each clan they live in a different part of the world so there's a lot of like world building aspects in there and how the different cultures are different um, another story I've been working on is sisters of the shadow wood and uh, you can see here that I have like general inspiration but then I also have each of the different characters which have code names right now for different colors um, some of the minor characters and then some of the different locations and even seasons that the story is gonna go through so that's where I gather a lot of inspiration first and research and I'll show you even where I put this into the template so it's easily accessible. Um, I'll show you that in just a second. And then the second step uh, that I do is I build upon that sort of like the snowflake method with outlining. Um, I'm trying to like keep it simple, keep to the core of what uh, my world, I want my world to be and then sort of branching out from there. So then I create profiles, longer, more detailed profiles for the overall world in the different locations. And then um, we I also have a world building master list um, and I'll explain this in a little bit but basically it is a master list of all these different things you consider you can consider for each part of your world or each aspect of world building um, but sometimes you don't need every single one of those things in every single one of your profiles uh, I've tried to do that before where I've tried to include every single thing and then there's a lot of blank holes and I have to sift through a lot of information and it just sort of gets overwhelming so what I've been trying to do lately is keep my world building and even my character profiles a little slimmer so that um, I can just focus on the core of what I already know and then I can have a master list of other ideas that I can then bring in when those things become important or I want to develop it more so does that make sense let me know in the comments if it does as I bring up um, as I bring up the template. And oh my gosh, Thomas, thank you so much. Again, I don't know why my comments aren't showing up in StreamYard, but I see it on YouTube. Thomas says it's difficult deciding on hard and soft magic rules. I would love to do a whole video on magic systems. And thank you so much for the super chat. Um, that's very, very sweet of you. And I so appreciate it from the bottom of my heart. Um, I'm seeing some other comments here too, but I know we have limited time. So if I'm missing a question, definitely repeat it um, as we go or at the end, because I definitely want to get into showing you you guys the templates so let me um, share what I'm going to show you first is the Scrivener version of my template and then afterwards I will pop over real quick to the Word doc slash Google Doc version for those of you that don't have Scrivener yet and here is what you will see when you download my template and what I have first is um, just a how to use this template file so definitely read this first you can click and reference this video at any time um, but it would uh, behoove you to definitely do that so that you um, know exactly what's going on in here um, but what I'm gonna ask you guys to look down at is the world and locations part and I'm gonna go through each um, sort of section of this telling you guys a little bit about it and so what I have in this world and locations section of my Scrivener is um, a basic brainstorming list. And um, this is, I got, sort of got this idea of keeping it very simple, especially when you're just 
developing the idea or you're just about to start drafting is I got it from Jessica Brody's fast drafting course. And if one of my patron cam cam is here, um, she told me about this course and I'm so glad I got to take it. Jessica Brody is the author of save the cat writes a novel, which I love so much. And, um, I was taking this fast drafting course, but she also has like, before you actually start fast drafting, she has this whole like prepping section and for not only world building, but character building, she was like, there's different levels of plotting, right? There's like the pantsers who just have like some basic ideas and then they just write and then they have the extreme plotters. And she had just this idea of starting simple and just taking like a part of your world or um, a section or a, a location and brainstorming five major things that make up that part of the world. So instead of like being like, okay, well, these are the animals in it and this is the weather and this is like all these little nitty gritty things. It's just starting with where your heart is, where the heart of the story is and what you think of and experience first when you think of that part of the world. And um, so basically all your inspiration, all the things you want to develop even more. And so um, I am going to show you a real quick example of, well, you know what, let me get through all the templates and then I'll show you an example of what some of um, my brainstorming has been for uh, my story on Wings of Ash and Dust for the five fairy clans um, and how that worked out. But I want to make sure we get through the templates first and then I will go back to that. Um, so yeah, so then uh, I have this and hopefully for all of you that might be a little overwhelmed by world building, just getting out your basic ideas, keeping it simple in this kind of document. Does it make you feel a little bit better? Um, because then the next level uh, would also be to get any inspiration or research together. So you can actually put links directly in here to any articles or pictures or whatever you need so that you can go back and uh, sort of do more research as you go. And then we get, and I'm like, going to make sure I'm right in line with my notes here, uh, we get into the location and world profiles, which is probably the thing that you're all like, can we just get to it already? Um, but for here, I, again, keep the location profile a little simpler. I'm going to bring this up here so that you guys can see it a little bit better. Everybody can read that. I think. Cool. So with each location of the world, and we'll get into the bigger world in just a second, um, this could be, again, be like a section of the world. It could be a smaller kingdom. It could be a tavern. It could be a bedroom. It could be the throne room. It could be wherever. And so um, the general layout is that I have name ideas. So sometimes like I don't know what to call it. So I have like a temporary name, but then I put a bunch of my name ideas in there. I also, if I have a Pinterest board just for that specific location, I put that in there. And again, this is like um, a lot to sort of set you up to just like be able to draft the story. Um, and so what I also like to include is the role um, that the location plays in the story or the importance of that place in the story. And um, I think, again, it's like we can get so into the details, the nitty gritty details of world building that and we get so excited about all these things that um, we get into the drafting and then we're like, shoot, how does this piece work with this piece? And, and how does this actually relate to like the kind of story that I'm trying to tell and the heart of the story I'm trying to tell? So I really love sort of trying to define this in a line or two right when I get going. And um, let's see, I'm just looking at my notes real here. And I would just say too, if you are writing more of a contemporary story, you might be like, why do I have to do all these details about like the setting and the world and stuff? But sometimes a world can be a character in and of itself or a part of the setting can be a character in and of itself. And even with um, contemporary stories, I was thinking about uh, the TV show Gilmore Girls and how their small town is it's so developed and so well put together and so quirky that it is like a character in and of itself. And it like has a certain mood and a feel that sets up the themes of like family and sort of bucking some um, kind of norms and, um, you know, trying to find out who you are in the midst of people who won't stop meddling with your life. And um, so just an example, sort of sidestepping the fantasy just for a second, because I think that this would be super helpful for anybody, um, including uh, the next few things here. Again, this is like the basics that I would include, and then we're going to get more in depth. But 
I would include um, a basic description of that location or place. Um, if it's a bigger place, then maybe some key places, some key items that you want to reference um, while you're sort of describing that place in the story. Symbols. Symbols can be really, really important. Um, they can be like literal symbols, literal items that are symbols um, that would wrap in again to your theme and, and the kind of story you're trying to tell. And um, then senses. So here's where I really get stuck when I'm drafting is like maybe I, I know what it looks like. So the C sense like makes a lot of sense to me, um, especially if I have pictures to reference. So that's why I do the Pinterest boards. But what in those parts of the world can you hear can you smell can you taste can you touch and um i personally have found that after i do a draft or two if i don't do this first i need to go then go back and do more research and more brainstorming of like what do these places smell like and what do they 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 feel like and and what kind of food is there that they can taste or the air like are they near the water and they can taste the salt you know coming off of the the sea water um and so that's some of the things, I think these are the, the overall things that are really going to help, no matter who's reading it, um, connect to the setting and connect to the deeper story and the theme and the mood and the tone of the story. Um, so at the very least, this is what I would start with. Um, and I'm just gonna check my comments real fast before I get into the overall world template. Um, Child of God says, I'm liking this so far. Yay, keeping it simple, totally agree. I think following this plan would totally help me because I do sometimes just wanna jump into things and pictures are great, I agree. ICEC says, I'd love to see uh, detailed with little deeper insight of world overall development and specific tips and tricks uh, for mind to pen on paper, definitely. And Flash University says, developing what matters most first is essential. I agree, I agree. And sometimes I can get so excited about all the nitty gritty details uh, that I, mi I miss this part. So this is what I would encourage you to do. Um, then we can get into a lot of the other like really fun things and I kept um, some of this the same for like an overall world. Um, so again, this is like the bigger world template and then this would be the location. So you can see that it's exactly the same. But then at the bottom, here's some things that I personally love to include um, when I'm brainstorming the overall world. Um, and again, you might only have like a little town or you might have just like a forest or you might have whatever, like a smaller thing. So you can organize this however you want. But for me and my my particular story of uh, On Wings of Ash and Dust, I have an overall world and then I have a bunch of different provinces. So when I'm talking about the overall world, um, I love to dig into the history and the conflicts um, in, in the world and then how does that play into my character storyline. So what is this world's history? What is the current state? So what was in the past and what is the current state? Um, and what are the internal conflicts of the world and what externally are they um, in conflict with if there are any? And I could add another line in here again of like, how does this tie into my main character's arc? Um, how does it mirror my main character's arc or um, create uh, you know a foil for it? Um, different things like that. I personally love when, especially fantasy stories, like whatever's going on in the big world is affecting uh, the, the smaller, more internal story of the, the main character. Then some other things I really like, I usually have different races or different um, people groups that have different skills. And so you could actually probably like copy this or copy this whole thing for like a specific race or a specific kind of person um, and then duplicate it for every different kind of people you have or different creatures. And I like including physical identifiers, their value system or what they value most, their their general temperament, um, their if they have any special skills or powers, um, what their clothing looks like, their weapons, if they have any. And then for society and culture, what's the hierarchy, the laws, the magic system, education system, common jobs, religion, like we talked about before, currency, you know, how do they trade or how do they um, buy things? And then of course, animals and creatures which is super fun and I'd love if anybody had any suggestions of like specific things to put under there but I just put animals and creatures uh, and your your imagination can run wild from there so that and you could 
probably take history and population and put it into each location profile too if it was a province or a town or whatever inside the bigger world um, but again i would encourage you especially if you're starting at the beginning of your story and crafting it that you would keep it simple and then draft and then as you're drafting or as you're revising you can then put in more details or realize oh i have to brainstorm this aspect let me put a note in my profile that um when i get back to revisions i need to sort to dig into this some more and to inspire you um, if you look down at templates just making sure you guys can still see everything on my screen here if you look down to templates um, I'm gonna have a few of just like the blank templates here that you can play around with and then the world building master list which I'm gonna go all the way to the top here and um, it just has some more specifics that you can then sprinkle sprinkle into your other profiles as they are uh, needed so or as you want to develop more so nature we have climate and weather plants and flora terrain animals and creatures still um, magic and tech so you can get even more into in depth here magic weapons transportation medicine energy and power sources communication uh, again this is like a list um, that I've I'm continually adding to as I hear other people talk about world building too so if you guys have any others I should be adding in here definitely let me know uh, civilization could be nations organizations and factions Actions, physical identifiers, values, temperament, skills and powers, clothing, architecture and infrastructure, languages, food, arts and entertainment, education, religion and belief system, history. And then for economy, we have trade and commerce, finance and currency, employment and common jobs, and politics, we have government and hierarchy, laws and military. So again, not all of this might apply to every single part of your world. You don't need to have all these specific details nailed down in order to write your story. But as you're trying to flesh things out or you see holes, you can come in here and then um, sort of piece them in where they are appropriate. Gonna go to the comments real fast. Um, let's see, Jane says, I love tying the locations conflict to those of your characters. Yes, definitely, me too. I should definitely put a line in there that is like specific to that. Um, hi, Leanne, no worries that you're late. Um, Flash University for Authors says, this template is great. I can already see how beneficial it could be for writers to help them create the essential details and remember them as they're writing. Agreed, I love having this out while I'm, while I'm drafting. ICEC says World of Warcraft and role playing is a template idea for an for an idea to understand the wor work concept. I used to play, but I can use this idea too. Yes, um, yeah, D and D, World of Warcraft, all these um, sort of role playing games too that have booklets um, that go into the different parts of the world. You could definitely go into that and grab whatever uh, other topics you think would be helpful. Child of God says this is a really nice template. I like the simplicity, but also digs deep at the same time. If that makes sense. Totally makes sense. Okay, now's the big question. Do you guys want to learn a little, see this template in action a little bit and see um, a little snippet of my clans and the, the fairies in my world? Um, because I have not talked too much about that on my YouTube channel yet. Again, I've shared with my patrons, but I'm really excited to um, share some of this with you. And then I will tell you how you can get these templates. So if um, this won't be in... This won't be in your template, <laughs> but it is um, an example. And um, I didn't go through and like fill out every single thing for every different province uh, for the location profiles, but um, I did sort of the brainstorming uh, section. So you can see that in action. So my fairy world does have a name, but I'm not gonna tell, reveal all of the names for all of the things quite yet. Um, but when I was brainstorming and thinking about this world and the core of what I wanted it, it to have, I wanted it to have five fairy clans who live in five different parts of the world. Um, the Sylph clan, which I'll talk about in a second, rules the rest at this point in time. Uh, but whispers of war are happening because each clan believes they are worthy of ruling and the Sylph clan has sort of monopolized power and mistreated it and um, the other clans are not happy about it. Each clan is also identified by their greatest value or what I'm calling an etho. Um, so each of them has uh, a value that they hold above the others and that's part of why they think, oh, well, this is what we value and this is how we function and so we feel like we should rule. And they also are um, sort of identified by the different types of wings that they have, which I'll talk about in a second. Um, they're location wise, uh, they're sort of like a circular world. I have a map I'll show you in a second with like mountains sort of bringing it uh, sort of 
uh, around the perimeter. And in the center, there is this thing called the sacred vine. It sort of looks like the Jack and the Beanstalk kind of vine um, and sort of spirals into the air. And um, pixie dust was something I really wanted to work in here. And it's mined in the tunnels, which I'll talk about in a second. And it's their greatest resource. It also is used for the magic. And there is also a plague going on at the same time. So there's uprising, war, uh, potential war, um, uh, dwindling resources and a plague going on and then there is there comes this uh, competition that they're all going to take part in and um, to decide who will be the ruler and so just to tell you a little bit about them um, I took names that I found from folklore that um, had to do with fairies and um, I sort of adapted them and reinterpreted them for myself for different types of fairies that basically look human with pointed ears and wings um, but have very different functions. So the Sylphs are the ruling uh, clan. They are located at the top of the sacred vine um, in the clouds. Their highest value is knowledge. Their wings are bird-like and they all sort of have like a different kind of color that represents them too. So their color is purple. Um, the Nymph prov province is located in the sea. They're sort of like a mermaid, merman slash fairy uh, type. Their highest value is beauty. Their wings are fin-like and their color is blue. Um, Dryad province uh, is located in the woods and they value life and protecting it and cultivating it. Um, they have insect or butterfly type wings, so it's like a typical fairy-like wing and their color is green. Actually, I also, let me just pull this up here. I had some pictures and I totally forgot. Here we go. So here's a little little map, a little drawing. <laughs> you guys were asking about maps. I did like a 3D version um, where it's more like this because there's the tunnels underneath and the sky. So it's not just like a flat world. It's like sort of three dimensional. So I have that. So here's the sylphs, the nymphs, uh, obviously, I couldn't find pictures with um, all with the wings all the time. The dryads, the kobolds live in the tunnels underground. Their value is creativity. Um, their wings are bat-like. They have like kind of like a little bit of a vampire vibe. Their color is gold because they mine the pixie dust. And then the Gwillians right here, um, they are located in the mountains surrounding the entire world. Uh, they value strength. Their wings are dragon-like and their color is red. And I really wanted to sort of base them off of all of these different things um, and really get their value systems uh, down because that's going to play a key point in what the trials and the tests are like in the competition and what my main character is going to have to face. So what do you guys think? Real quick, we're going to have to wrap up in a second because Jane's video is going to be premiering. Um, but it sounds like you guys definitely like the template. And um, and let's see. This sounds awesome already, says Lozane. Thank you. Mary says, so cool. Thank you. So I'm going to leave this. Uh, well, actually, I'm going to take this down because real quick, I want to show you. Oh, we have three minutes. Oh, no, wait. Hold on. Hold on. Okay, I'm going to pull up my slides again so I can show you uh, that not only do I have the Scrivener templates here, but um, I also have uh, a Word slash Google Doc version that um, when you open up the document outline, you can click around to the different profiles, copy and paste, whatever you need to uh, duplicate. And here's the world building master list at the bottom. Now you're probably like, okay, I'm sold. How do I get it? Um, again, it is free. Uh, if you'd like these pre-made templates, you can get them um, on, by, by signing up for my newsletter on my website. That's the link there. And it's also linked down below. I also wanted to let you know that, again, if you want to check out Scrivener, you can get it for 30 days for free. Um, and again, we have a bunch of tutorials that Jane and I have uh, created in case you're just like totally overwhelmed by it. You should definitely check out those links down below. Um, another thing is my friend, uh, Laura Ferrari, has a world building course specifically geared towards young adult authors. And um, she gave me a link to a free world building checklist that goes in depth um, and really talks about world building with heart, which I love. And so that's that is linked down below if you want to take advantage of her free world building checklist along with my templates and um, maybe check out her course because it looks really cool. But right now, I hope you guys are ready to learn about Jane's super helpful scene plotting tricks. Um, her video is linked down below and is premiering in just two minutes. Um, but I did want to let you know 
next week. Um, usually every week we're here on a Wednesday at 5 p.m., but I've been thinking about changing up the time. Um, and so I don't know if it's going to be next week. I haven't made a final decision because there's some things that are still outliers, but we will either have a plan with me session that we usually do at the end of each month next Wednesday at 5 p.m. or next Tuesday is actually my birthday. <laughs> And there's some super secret awesomeness about my upcoming books that I've been wanting to tell you guys, and I might be ready to tell you guys next Tuesday, but I just don't know yet because I don't have certain details. Um, so if you want to know what exactly is happening next week, uh, definitely make sure you subscribe to this channel because I'll put something in the community board and the video will pop up when it's ready. And then um, make sure you're following me on Instagram because I usually talk a lot about these videos before I do them. I actually usually ask questions if you guys want to hear more about certain things on there. And um, we have a lot of fun on there as well. And I just always want to say a huge, huge thank you to all of my patrons. If you guys are patrons in the comments, say that I'm a patron right now in the comments because you guys are amazing um, for supporting my channel and supporting my upcoming books, which are coming. And they have heard a lot of big secrets about these books. Uh, so if you want to check out our Patreon fam over there and hear more, definitely um, you can do that. The link is down below. And thanks so much, you guys. It is 530 right now. So you should definitely head over to Jane's channel. I'm so sorry I didn't have time to check in on all the amazing comments you guys were leaving me. Um, but this was so, so fun. I hope these temp templates are helpful. Again, they're linked down below. And please go to Jane's video, which is also linked down below uh, for the premiere of her perfect scene plotting video. I'm really excited about it. And thanks guys for saying I'm a patron in the comments. You guys are amazing. All right, I'm going to stop here and we will see you over on Jane's channel. Bye!